And my first question is regarding when you start playing basketball and, and, and why you embrace it so strongly? Yeah, I mean, I started playing when I was about 14, so very late, but I really loved it because I had found basketball at a time where my confidence was really low. I was very tall in grade nine and I had never picked up a basketball, but I didn't realize I was going to a basketball school where everybody there loved basketball. They played it. And as soon as I walked in the doors, they saw how tall I was and they just kept approaching me asking if I was going to join. And finally, you know, just to stop them from asking, I went out to the tryout and I remember being so awful and walking outside of the gym. I remember hearing the coach goes, well, you can't teach height. So that's how I made my first basketball team. But I really, I really fell in love with it when I found a coach at a local community center and he basically wouldn't let me practice with his team. All he made me do was do like set shots, form shots on the side, dribbling drills. And I just remember for the first time in my life, I was able to control the amount of success that I could have because I could see with a little bit of effort or a lot of effort, I was improving. And for me, that really built my confidence. And for me, all of a sudden, I found a place and a tribe where height was coveted. And I didn't have to like, you know, walk around all shoulders bunched. My confidence started to soar because height was a was something that was really important in the sport, but also I could see the results of all my practice. And that to me was like this self-fulfilling prophecy of, you know, put in the work and see the results. And that was really powerful for me. Yeah, it looks like you have the Phil Jackson triangle, the right coach. You, you could control what you were doing and, uh, and you had confidence in yourself and you have that asset about the height. And, and then you start playing college. So starting at 14, that is, is not very young, you can earn a scholarship. How, how did that went through? Yeah, I mean, my learning curve was steep. So as soon as I, you know, figured out that if I put in more work, I could do really well. So I became literally obsessed with training. And, you know, I improved within two months, I improved exponentially. And then every year after that, so all through high school, my four or five years of high school, I just kept on getting better and better. Then I became, you know, like I, I started getting recruited by schools, um, different universities, uh, all throughout Canada, which was really awesome. And of course, that feeling of being recruited only made me more obsessed about getting better, right? So it kept feeding the obsession of, you know, putting in the work. I always, I loved putting in the work because it was something to do. I was not really a social kid. I loved to just play my sport, get better and do really well. Yeah, you have inside the power to improve and it was just up to yourself. And after the college, you switched to, to business, to entrepreneur. How did you make that shift and keep in the same field of basketball? Yeah, and I, I think like most athletes, it's funny, I, I thought I was going to go play pro, like I had this really big plan in university where, you know, I was going to play my five years, I was going to, you know, get a contract and play overseas, and then I was going to come back and start my business. And, you know, in my last year of university, so I played four years, and then my last year, my dad actually, um, you know, passed away from cancer, my back injury, I had hurt my disc in a back in my back each year, uh, starting in my second year. And by my fifth year, I, you know, my doctor was like, you're going to need spinal surgery if you continue on this path. Uh, and to be honest with you, the loss of my father, you know, just tipped me right over the edge. Um, so I gave up, you know, in, in the span of a month, I had to give up my passion for my sport and that dream of playing pro along with one of the most influential people in my life. So I didn't really know what to do with myself. I had all this passion and I was still in school, but I really needed to put that somewhere and school wasn't it for me. I didn't love going to school. I did well, but I didn't love it. Uh, and one of my friends encouraged me to start my business. And I was like, well, I don't even know how to do a business. Like that's not what I trained for. And he's like, I'll help you. Let's just come up with a name. We'll incorporate. And then it went bananas because all of a sudden I took all the passion and all that hard work obsession and I threw it into my business. And I, it was a really amazing transfer of that work ethic and obsession for success that really helped drive my business to what it is today. And I don't have a business degree, 
I don't have any kind of formal training. All I did was I took the same principles that I achieved success in my sport and threw it into my business. And, you know, just like in sport, I kept chipping away and growing and growing and growing. And now I have an awesome business. Yeah, it looks like you know how to work on your craft. And, and regarding your father, uh, I personally think that every injury has a name, you know, when something happens to you is for a reason. And uh, I, I feel sorry about your loss. But uh, you have a great business and you have three kids that they start playing basketball and it was a natural from them. They start different sports or just they jump on basketball. You know, it's funny. I tried to do the European system where I put them in gymnastics and swimming and like introduce them like that was when they were really young. And then I tried to then expose them to all sports. So that's I have three boys. I did that for my first two. And I'll explain later why I didn't do that with my third. But uh, my first two, you know, they tried everything and uh, they ended up, you know, committing to basketball. And, I, you know, I think there's a lot of nurture versus nature there because I feel like, you know, I'm surrounded. Like I brought my boys with me to work. Like I didn't even get a maternity leave because I'm a, an entrepreneur. So, you know, as soon as I gave birth, those kids were in a baby bucket in the gym with me. Right. Because I was working. So they've been immersed in basketball for so long. But what I believe is, you know, yes, I expose them to all the sports, but because I gave them the ABCs of basketball very early, they felt like they were in control of their own success. They felt like they were athletes just by having the ability to dribble and shoot faster than their friends at school. So all of a sudden I gave them this identity of being an athlete because they had the fundamentals early. So why wouldn't they want to continue with basketball, right? I didn't have great skill at soccer at myself. And, you know, when I put them in a soccer program, you know, I couldn't be much help. But with basketball, I have all these amazing staff and they're surrounded by the energy and, you know, all that success around them. Of course, they're going to want to gravitate towards a sport like that because they already feel successful. So success you know, it's like an obsession, right? When you want, when you have a little bit, you want more. And because, you know, that gap of like, oh, I'm really good at basketball versus soccer. Obviously they all sort of gravitate, gravitated to basketball. Plus they're really tall. I'm six feet and my eldest son is like six foot eight, my middle six, six. Like it, it kind of helps to be a tall <laughs> person in the sport. Yeah. 